Hello and welcome students to another episode of History at Home. In today's episode, we will be looking at how historians date history and the different types of notations that they use after dates within history. So you might be sitting there in class this school year and we'll be looking at a lot of different ancient history events and historical figures. And I can guarantee you one thing that we'll look at and study this school year are the Great Pyramids at Giza. And you'll probably hear me say something along the lines of this while we study the Great Pyramids. Pharaoh Khufu constructed the Great Pyramid around 2550 BCE. And you might be sitting there thinking while I say this, hmm, I wonder how many years ago that was. And you might also be thinking to yourself, what is BCE? And in this video, I'm going to cover those two topics with you together. So as emerging historians, it's going to be important for us to be able to do the following. These are skills that I want to develop and I'll go through with you in this video. And I want to work on these throughout the course of the year. I feel like these skills help us develop a better understanding of history and a deeper appreciation for history. And these skills are, I want us to be able to calculate how many years ago an event happened if I give you a year. And also, I would like for us to learn how to calculate what year an event happened if you're given met how many years ago it occurred. So these are skills that we'll develop today and we'll go over in this video and we'll use in our class throughout the rest of the school year. So as a emerging historian, I think the first thing or first place we have to start at is talking about what is a historian. A historian is a person who studies and writes about the past. And we can credit this profession with developing underneath the guidance of a man named Herodotus. Herodotus was an ancient Greek scholar, and he is generally credited with being the world's first historian. And what Herodotus did was he traveled throughout the Mediterranean region and collected stories and interviewed people and compiled these stories and interviews into a book that we today call the histories. And this is generally credited with being the world's oldest written account of history. Now, Herodotus is a flawed source. He's nicknamed the father of history, but he also has another nickname, which is the father of lies. His source seems to be heavily fantasized and skewed and filled with exaggerations. So although we te technically classify this as the beginnings of history, we also know that he's a very flawed source and that his stories are often embellished. So before we had written history, we had a historical era that we call prehistory. And prehistory is the historical era before humans invented writing. Writing is a relatively new invention within the course of human history. In fact, 97% of human history happened during prehistoric times. 97% of human history happened before humans actually invented a way of reading and writing. And due to this, historians really rely on artifacts to tell us the deeper story of this prehistoric era. Most of human history is not recorded. It's not written down somewhere. So what historians really have to rely on are the artifacts, the tools, the items that humans crafted and used to help us better understand this shadowy past of human history. And picture here is some cave art that we'll look at together this year in a town called Lasco. And this is known as the Lasco Cave Paintings. And they're a great source of information on prehistoric cultures that existed in France. All right, so into the topic for today, which is dating history. I feel like the best way to visualize this information together is by mapping it out on a timeline. And what historians have to do is figure out where to start. How do we measure time? Where is the logical place for recording time? And how do we measure this? So what historians have done is they begin at this point here in our timeline. And this is going to be the birth of Jesus Christ. And it's this figure that we really use to measure time. We measure time before his birth, and we measure time after his birth. So we'll start over here on the left side. The left side of this timeline is for people and events that were born before the birth of Jesus Christ. And what you would see on this side of the timeline is 
as we get closer to the birth of Jesus, the years are going to start going down. They're going to count down as we approach the birth of Jesus Christ. So we'll get smaller and smaller and smaller until we're right here. And this would be what we would call the year 1 BCE. On the right hand side would be people and events after the birth of Jesus Christ. So on this side, we would see the year 1 CE, then 2, 3, 4, etc., all the way up until this current year, which is the year 2021 CE. So on this side, you have years that are counting up as we move further away from the birth of Jesus Christ. So again, this side of our timeline would be the BCE side or before the common era. And this side would be the common era or CE. In regards to our class together, most of the events and people that we study this year will happen before the birth of Jesus Christ. So they will be dated with the acronym BCE after them. We focus mostly on this side of the timeline. So you might be more accustomed to this. You might be more accustomed to seeing dates end with a BC or an AD after them. These are being used less and less frequently within the field of history and are being replaced with the following acronyms. BC is being replaced with the acronym BCE. And if you remember from the previous uh, slide, this is for before common era. And AD is being more frequently replaced and uh, inserted would be the acronym CE or Common Era. Fortunately for us, that's as hard as it gets. The dates are not changing. The events are not changing. It's just the way in which historians denote time. We're only changing the acronym following the date. So if you're accustomed to seeing 2500 BC, we're going to change that to just 2500 BCE. And if you're accustomed to seeing 1200 AD, we're going to change that now to 1200 CE. So our general rule of thumb here is that if you see a date with BCE after it, that's pretty old information. If you see a date with CE after that, that's more recent and closer to our modern era. Okay, so let's talk about BCE and CE. Like I mentioned, BCE stands for Before the Common Era, and CE stands for Common Era. And those generalizations that I just mentioned are true. BCE is for events and people that predate or come before the birth of Jesus Christ. And CE will be for events and people that occur after the birth of Jesus Christ. So this is really important in regards to our class. I expect to see these formulas in your notes for this video. I'm going to show you how to calculate how many years ago an event happened if I give you a year. So again, if we go back to our previous example where I said Pharaoh Khufu constructed the Great Pyramid around 25 or 2550 BCE, and you thought to yourself, I wonder how many years ago that was, I'm going to show you right now how to calculate how many years ago that was. So we got some really simple formulas to follow. If you're being asked how many years ago did something happen, you're going to follow the formulas down here to figure it out. So the first thing that you need to look at is, is the date ending with a BCE or a CE? So in our first example here, to figure out how many years in the past an event occurred during a BCE era event, you're going to follow this formula. You're going to take the current year and you're going to add it to the date of the event in the BCE era and you'll get your answer. Now, after you get your answer here, you have to plug in the following. You have to add in afterwards the words years ago or the acronym YA or YA at the end of your answer. So I should see a number followed by either years ago or the acronym YA. And here's our example over here to the right. So going back to that idea of Farah Khufu. Pharaoh Khufu constructed the Great Pyramid around 2550 BCE. Your question is, again, how many years ago was that? How many years ago was that? So what I would do is just set up a really simple equation. I would take the current year, and I'm recording this video in the year 2021 CE. So I would take our current year, 2021, and I would add the event in the BCE era. So this right here 
since this says BCE after it, it's telling me that I need to add. So all I'm going to do is take 2550 BCE and I'm adding. And I get 4571 years ago or 4571 years ago. So the Great Pyramid at Giza is 4571 years old. It was built 4571 years ago. So again, look for that BCE. If you're being asked a, a event in a BCE era, you're adding it with the current year, set up a simple equation and you get how many years ago it was. The next step is this though. If we're trying to figure out how many years in the past an event occurred during the CE era or CEE -E times, you have to follow a different formula. And the big difference with this formula is that you can't add the numbers, you need to subtract the numbers. So again, you're going to start with our current year. And in this example here, I'm talking about the American Civil War. The American Civil War started in 1861 CE. So again, I'm looking here. I see that CE. That CE tells me I should be subtracting. I'll start with our current year, which is 2021. And all I need to do now is subtract. And I'm seeing CE. That's what's telling me I'm subtracting. 1861. And then from there, I get my answer of 161, yeah, 161 years ago. So I can instantly tell you that the American Civil War, although it happened in 1861 CE, that to me means that the American Civil War happened 161 years ago. So quick summary here. If you are being asked the question, how many years ago, you need to do the following three steps. Number one you start with the current year. So in this case, in this scenario, since I'm recording in 2021, I start with 2021 and I'm going to add it to the BCE event if I look and see a BCE event. However, if I see a CE event, I need to subtract. So that's the big difference. BCE, I'm adding. CE, I'm subtracting. After that, I need to add in the word years ago. Sorry, add in years ago or ya yeah at the end of it. And that's how I would find out how many years ago something happened. Okay, what if I'm being asked what year did something happen? Well, if that's the case, here's what I need to do. Again, I have a couple formulas and you should add these into your notes. To figure out what year an event happened in the past, you're going to follow one formula, okay? Your formula, again, is going to start with the current year, so 2021, and you will subtract how many years ago the event took place, and you'll get your answer. This is the trick, though. If you generate your answer is negative, you're going to replace the negative with a BCE at the end of it. So I would see an answer, a negative answer, get rid of the negative, and just add in BCE afterwards. If your answer is positive, what you would do is just add CE after it. So let's look at two examples. Humans begin to farm around 12,000 years ago. You're being asked, in what year did humans begin to farm? What year did it happen? In what year did humans begin to farm? So I'll set up my equation. I'll start with the current year, and then I will subtract how many years ago the event took place. So I am going to subtract, in this case, 12,000. Now, obviously, in this scenario, this is a much larger number. 12,000 is much larger than 2021. So I know I'll get a negative number. And my negative number will therefore register that I should add a BCE after it. So my answer is negative 9,979, but it's going to be around the year uh, 9,979 BCE. Again, that negative, I'll get rid of it but it's gonna tell me that this is a BCE era event. And our final example will be this. Let's say we're looking at World War I or talking about World War I, and I tell you that World War I began 107 years ago. We're gonna set up our equation just like we did with the last one, start with the current year, and again, subtract how many years ago it took place. So in this case, 107. And in this case, again, this is the larger number now. This is the smaller number. I know I'm going to get a positive number. So I'm going to add CE to the end of it. And World War I started in 1914 
CE. So my answer was 1914. Since it's positive, I'm adding CE to the end of it. All right, a quick summary for that. If you're being asked what year did something happen, here are the steps that you need to follow. You again start with the current year. You always subtract with this. If it's asking you what year did something happen, you're always going to subtract. You don't do any addition. You're going to subtract the info that's provided. If your answer is positive, you put a CE after your answer. And if it's negative, you're going to put a BCE after your date, and you're going to drop the negative from before the number you get. All right, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.